Hey, what's happening guys? It's December, which means two things. One, it's Christmas. And two, that means it's the advent of Code Month. So let's get started. I'm cool again. Cool, so what I wanna do in this video is I wanna do, I'm probably just gonna do day one of advent of code and I wanna do a solution in JavaScript and a solution in Clojure. And we can just compare the two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to advent of code and check out the first problem. So I'm not gonna read out the whole problem, it's a cute little story, but essentially what we need to do is we're gonna get a list of numbers and every time the second number of an array is bigger than the first number or the number that was previously, then we need to increase a counter. Once we have that final number, then we'll submit our answer here at the bottom. So let's get started. So I'm gonna open up VS Code. And first I'm gonna do the solution in JavaScript, check the solution, and then we'll look at doing it in Clojure. Cool, so I'm gonna make a new JavaScript file here. I'm just gonna call it scratch.js. Before we read in, I think, yeah, so before, the, here's the input. Before we read in all this input, I actually just wanna do it with our own array. So I'm gonna make const input, just an array, and it'll be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool, so now we got our input. Actually, let's just also do this. I wanna make one lower than seven so that we don't have an addition of every iteration. So let's start. The first thing I wanna do is probably just iterate over this input, and I'm gonna do that using a for loop index over the array, which is our input. So we need to check this element. The first element is gonna be, let's say our first value. And then if we go i plus one, that will be our second value. And okay, we're gonna need a counter. So let's create a counter and we'll set that at zero initially. So every time if second value is greater than first value, then we just plus plus our counter. And then at the end of this, we can log our output, which will be counter is equal to counter. Save this and let's open up our terminal. And I'm gonna run this using node. So node input.js. Oh, okay, it's not input.js, it is scratch.js. Cool, so our counter is seven, and I think that's right. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. Cool, that works. So now we need to use this puzzle input for our problem. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna just copy all of this and create a new file here, and I'm just gonna call it input data.txt. Save it. So we're in node here, so we can actually use the file system, const fs is equal to require. I'm going to say fs here. And then with our file system, we can read, yep, yeah, we can read a file and we want to read this input data.txt encoding is utf8. And then we should get a function here, cool, with an error. We're going to assume no error and our data. So now I'm just going to grab this code here, move our test input here. I'm just going to replace this with, oh no, so data is actually going to be file text. So we need to convert our data to look like this input. So like if we just log data, it's just going to be like the file. Oh, and we don't have counter anymore. Let's move counter up here. So let's just rerun this. Yeah, so this is just text now. We need it to be in an array. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna remove this input here. I'm gonna say const input is equal to data.split. And we're gonna split it by a new line. And then I think we also need to convert these to numbers because we're doing this over here. So let's convert them to numbers. So can map over them and then we can just convert them to number. And just wanna log this out. Save this, clear our console. Cool, yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're logging on every iteration as well. So this is in this loop. So I'm just gonna, yeah, get this out of this loop. Save that, let's just clear this and rerun it. 
Yeah, cool. So we have our array and input data 127, 147. Looks good. So it's 1602. 1602. Submit. Cool. So let's try and do that in Clojure. So I'm just going to create a depths.edn file here and put a blank map in there. And then I'm going to create a scratch.clj and the namespace this as scratch. Let's run a REPL. So I'm going to use Culver and start a project REPL using depths.edn. Let's see if we go plus one, one. Cool. Looks like our REPL is working. So let's start. Okay, cool. So I think the first thing, let's do this what we did before. Let's get this logic down where we basically loop over an array well, in the closure vector and increase the counter. So what I want to do there is we'll define a vector. We'll call this input and that will be, we'll just copy these values here. Cool. Evaluate that. And now we have our vector. We need to do the same thing. We need to loop over this vector and we need to check if the second value is greater than the first value and if it is we'll increase the counter i think i'm going to use loop for that so with loop we can create bindings here on every iteration these bindings will update so every time we recur we will update these bindings and on a condition we can exit this loop so i'm going to call this we can actually initially bound input to input so this is a new input i can actually name this something else let's name it input nums then what we need to do is we need to get the first value and the second value out of input nums. So I'm going to create a left binding here and we can say first val and that will be the first element out of input nums. So first, I'm going to use first and second here. So if we had a vector of like one, two, three, and we said first, we would get the value one. And if we say second, we'll get the value two. So it takes the first and second value. So we can do that here. First val and second val. I'm just gonna get second from input nums. Then what we need to do is we need to check if the second val is greater than the first val, we need to increase a counter. So in this loop, I'm actually going to create a new binding for a counter that will maintain the counter state and I'm going to set it to zero initially. Here we can have an if statement and we can check if the second val. Now you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm actually going to do this check inside of this let. So I'm going to say next counter and if the second val is greater than the first val then return, well, increase the counter. So we can go ink counter. Otherwise, return the counter. Okay, so now we have our next counter, which if the second val is greater than the first val, so if two is greater than one, then we'll increase this counter. And then what we would want to do is we'd want to recur this loop and we'll pass through the rest of our input nums as the first binding. So what this will do is this will assign the rest of input nums to input nums. And what rest does is if we go rest on our input, it will return the rest of the input leaving out the first value. So we can go rest there and then we'll pass through our next counter. So this counter will now be either increased or not increased. So this will work. I'm just curious to see what happens because we have no exit on this. So it's probably going to break. Yeah, now point the exception. At some point, yeah, we'll have no input nums left. So, well, actually, let's say here, let's exit here. So if the count of input nums is equal to one, then we'll return our counter. Otherwise, we'll do this whole let binding and increase the counter. And I think that'll work. Seven. Okay, cool. So that works. Now we just need to do this step here where we read the file and we convert all the data to numbers. Instead of this input, I'm going to define input here. I'm going to slurp the file. So slurp will read the file and that is input data.txt. So if we evaluate this and then we look at input, 
Yeah, we got that file. So now we need to split it like we did before. And there's actually a function in the string namespace, which will allow us to, to do that really easily. So we can just go require and let's require closure dot string as string evaluate this. And now we can go string. I think it's split. Yeah, split lines. And now if we evaluate this, cool. Yeah, we have it in a vector, but now we have the same problem where they're all still strings. So let's convert those to numbers. So we'll map over these and we'll use an anonymous function here. And then we can return, I think it's integer, let's pass int with the value. And if we evaluate this, yeah, cool. We have the right input. So now we should be able to run this 1602. Awesome. So that's the closure solution. Cool. We got one gold star. We can continue. There's a second part to this question. Cool. So without reading the whole question, what it wants us to do is it now wants us to, us to check the aggregate of the first three values against the next three values. So you have to check whether 199 plus 200 plus 208 is less than 200 plus 208 plus 210. So what I actually want to do is go back to the JavaScript solution and see how we'll do that here. So the way I'm thinking of doing this is converting this array into something like this. So we'll have one, two, three, and then the next element in the array will be two, three, four, and then something like this, and then we'll add them up. And then the next one would be three, four, five, and then once we have this data, then we can convert this into something that looks like, what's this, six, nine, 12. And then we can run this same function here. So let's look at doing that here. So we have our input. I think we can actually do this. We can get our const, I'm gonna call it like intermediate array. And we can go input dot, so either slice or splice, I think it's slice, our current index plus two. And let's just log this out. And I'm gonna comment all of this. So let's see what that gives us. Open up a terminal, I'll make a new terminal, and run this with node scratch.js. And this does not look right. Return after the first, I'm just gonna return after the first loop to see what we get. Oh, it does look right. Okay, I just need to make this plus three. So we evaluate this, one, two, seven, one, four, seven, one, four, eight. So let's check that here. One, two, seven, one, four, seven, one, four, eight. I just wanna check that the next one is also right. So I wanna say if i is greater than three, return. Yeah, okay, so this is exactly the data that we want. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna create const, I'm gonna create, values to check. So a new array. And I want to add these up so we can reduce this. So we'll have our accumulator and our value and we're going to start with zero. And we can return our accumulator plus our value. And this should now return these numbers summed up. So we can say values to check say, uh, we can actually just add it straight away. And that doesn't work, we can push. So then once we have those values to check, I'm going to grab this out of here. And let's just run this for loop again. So we can do a for loop, I values to check. And then I'm going to paste the previous code that was in there. And instead of using our original input, we're gonna use values to check here. Save this and let's rerun it. 1633. Three. Let's see if that works. 1633. Three, three. Okay, cool. So that also works. We completed day one, but we completed it in JavaScript. So let's now complete it in Clojure. So what I'm gonna do in the Clojure one, is if we go back here, I'm gonna close this. Just check that this REPL is still running. Yeah, so what I want to do in the closure one is I'm actually going to make this a function. I want to say def check depths. So the this this calculation is to do with the depths of the C. So I'm just going to call it check depths. 
and that's going to take in our input depths. And I'm going to move this into this function. And we're going to, our input nums will be our input depths. And this is not happy. And it's because this is not a function. Make it a function and we can evaluate this. Now we can go check depths with our input. Cool, so that works with our old one. So now we need to do that same thing that we did here where we basically want to create this like new array structure with closure. So let's see how we're gonna do that. I wanna use loop again. So I'm gonna use loop. I'm gonna create the input nums again. So input nums will assign that to our original input initially. And then we don't need a counter. Instead what we need is, we need, what did we call it here? We need our values to check. So I'm gonna create that here. You know, I'm gonna call it, yeah, this is called values to check, but it's probably should be called depths or something. Values to check. And we're gonna start that off as an empty vector. Okay, so now what I'm thinking about doing is using the take function in closure. So like take three of inputs will give us the first three values. And basically adding, add these values, we'll add these values added up to our values to check. And then recurring it the same as before where we use the rest of the input nums. So we'll have something where we'll have recur, we'll have rest of input nums, and then we'll have conjoin our result of adding those three numbers together to these values to check. So that's pretty much how we want to recur it. Let's get these values in. So I'm gonna create a let binding. For the result, I wanna do the same thing that we did here also. I wanna get, so get the three numbers from the vector, then add them up. So to do that, let's go back here, and we wanna take three from our input nums, and then to add them up, we can just go reduce plus. And that should work. I'm not going to call this result actually. I'm going to call it combined values. And then here we can run that through here. But now we also need a exit clause. So this loop stops working. So at some point. So what we can do is we can check if the count of input nums is equal to two. So basically we can't make, we can't take out three anymore. Then we'll return our values to check. I think this this looks good to me. Oh, okay, we need to grab this let here and put it within the if statement, or the if function. And if we evaluate this, we get a result here, 422, 442. I think that's right, I don't know. Let's define this as a variable. I'm gonna define this as combined input. Evaluated and now we can check depths with our combined inputs. So we can run check depths with combined inputs. Evaluate this 1633. Three. I think that's right. Let's go back to our scratch and check. Yeah, 1633. Three. I haven't checked other people's solutions for this. If you have a solution, maybe put it in the comments below. I think it'd be really cool to see. So in, on the JavaScript side, I didn't really go for a functional approach. I think that's because with this kind of check, it's easier to do it in like four loops than maybe reducing and using the index on the reduce. Also, the reduce on closure doesn't actually allow you to, doesn't keep track of the index. So that's why I used a loop. Cool guys, catch you in the next one, bye.